Ski Dad. Welcome back to Ski Dad TV. In this video, I'll be presenting base skiing, an offensive approach to ski racing. This is intended for any athlete of any ability level that wants to improve as a ski racer. It's also intended for any coach or coaching staff that wants to operate under a clean umbrella and a single philosophy to improve athletes effectively and linearly. This presentation comes as accumulation of my experience and knowledge as an athlete, as an industry professional, as an Alpine race coach, as a PSIA level three certified instructor, and as a fan of ski racing who's watched every race on the World Cup over the last five seasons. Currently, I'm a stay-at-home dad. I have two awesome boys, five years old and three years old, and I'm a ski instructor at Deer Valley in the winter. And I put this presentation together with my boys in mind because I want them to have a philosophy or an idea of how to approach ski racing when the time comes that is clean and effective. I think of base skiing as an offensive approach, similar to an offensive game plan or strategy in football. You got the West Coast offense, you got the wing tee offenses, different kinds of game plans that can be utilized to achieve um, the same objective, which is winning games and scoring points. Similarly, you have different offensive field positioning strategies in soccer. You have the 4-3-2-1 field position strategy. You have the 4-4-2 field position strategy. Again, there are two different game plans, two different ways of going about the same sport to achieve the goal of winning games and scoring points. So what is the base skiing philosophy? The base skiing philosophy operates under a simple principle of the primary objective in a race run is to have clean completions. Now what is a clean completion? Let's go over to the board here. Here we have two turns drawn. We have initiation, apex, that's the fall line right there. Completion, transition, initiation, apex, completion again. Okay. So the primary objective of base skiing is to have clean completions. So you want an athlete to be able to be clean right through here. Now for some athletes, this is all they're going to be able to be clean through. Okay. Maybe they don't have the skill or the ability to ski this whole part clean, but they need to be clean here. Or maybe there's some fear involved and they can only be clean through this part of the turn, okay? But again, it's a clean completion, okay? Some athletes are gonna be clean from here to completion. Now, some athletes are gonna be able to be clean from apex all the way through completion. Now, if you can be clean from apex to completion every single turn in a race run, you're gonna be competitive in every race you enter. You can also be clean above the apex and be rolling the skis and carving the skis up here and clean through completion, all the way to where you're clean from initiation all the way through completion, and this would be considered a rolled up turn or a purely carved turn. Now, if you can carve up here, you should. This is absolutely the fastest way to go about ski racing is carving as much of the turn as possible. But again, primary objective of base skiing is to be clean through completion. It is better to lose speed at the top of the turn than the bottom of the turn. Let's go back to the board for that. Now, this is a physics question, okay? Now say an athlete comes into the turn at 15 meters per second, okay? And they scrub speed right here and they lose three meters per second of speed, all right? They have gravity working down the fall line. That's 9.8 meters per second per second, okay? To aid them and get them back up to speed through completion. Now, take the same athlete entering the turn 15 miles per hour, 15 meters per second, and they scrub down here, and they lose three meters per second. Even though they would have gained speed by being clean up here, they're gonna lose three meters per second here, and now they've gotta get across the hill without the aid of gravity, okay? And so they're actually gonna be slower to the next turn by losing speed down here than they would have been if they had lost the speed up here and the men clean and use gravity to get back up to speed. So the basis of the base skiing philosophy is grounded in the physics of it is faster to lose speed at the top of the turn than it is to lose speed at the bottom of the turn. A run with less roll-ups and all clean completions is prioritized over a run with more roll-ups but speed loss at completion. Okay, so there's a lot of athletes that are out there and they're trying to roll up as many turns as possible and they're trying to carve the top of the turn and they'll do that effectively and they'll have a lot of good gates in a row, but then they're going to have one turn down here where boom, there's a big speed dump, a big loss of speed. Now they've lost gravity, they've lost momentum. It's harder to get that going again. Okay, so in base skiing, we want to prioritize 
all clean completions. If an athlete goes 100% of the way down the course with apex to completion, clean every time, but they got little, maybe a speed scrub, maybe they throw a stiff, maybe there's a butter, there's a feather, or any kind of little drag maneuver to maintain or to modulate their speed, but they maintain clean completions. We want this run of all clean completions more than we want a run with three or four gates that are really, really fast, but then one big speed dump here. Additionally, it is more important to maintain speed in base skiing than it is to generate speed. Now, kind of the same explanation goes, but say an athlete's coming at 15 meters per second, okay, they, they're clean all the way through. There's no speed dump there, they're clean all the way through. Now they enter this turn at 18 meters per second. Now they run another clean turn. Now they're at 21 meters per second, okay? They're accelerating, constantly gaining speed or making speed. This is not sustainable. Okay, if you just keep on accelerating, you're either going to blow out of the course, crash, or have a big speed dump at the bottom of a turn and not be able to make the rest of the way down. Okay, so say you go 15 meters per second of a clean turn, now you're 18 meters per second. Okay, you're clean through this one, but now you can't make a clean completion at 21 meters per second at the next turn. So, what are you going to do at the top of that next turn? You're going to need to throw a step or make some kind of maneuver that loses the speed that gets you back down into the 18 meters per second range so you can achieve another clean completion and then after that keep doing clean completions all the way to the bottom. So again, maintaining speed is prioritized over generating speed. So that's the, the basic philosophy of base skiing. Now let's get into how we're going to achieve it. The base skiing style is a compact position which incorporates a ski deviation or drift, okay? And now we're not talking about technique here. We are we're gonna talk a little bit technique, but really there's a style that every athlete, and it's gonna be unique for each athlete, that they need to achieve clean completions on moderate to steep terrain, okay? So the idea is that the athlete goes out moderate to steep terrain and just goes for clean completion, clean completion. And then that style or that technique or that approach that they can achieve those clean completions is going to be their base position or their base style, okay? The skis are going to be light at initiation because ideally we're figuring out base where it's a little bit tough on the terrain. We're going to be light initiation. Angulation happens before pressure, okay? Now, before we get to the exotic maneuvers, let's show a video of the skiing I'm talking about. Okay, and the video I'm going to show is a video of me free skiing, and I it, obviously it's not a race run. However, I do think this skiing is good, and it fulfills the objective of clean completions while skiing. This run is Tycoon at Deer Valley. It's a relatively flat start. Notice the clean completions, clean completion relative. There's a deviation right there of the skis. Now we roll over. This is a steep pitch right here. This is fairly steep. You can tell by the angles. It's steep. Let's see the completions remain strong and clean. I maintain pulling radius, okay? I don't get late with my line if there was an imaginary course there. And I do it with this deviation ski method, okay? So let's get into it, okay? Here we're going across the flats, okay? There's a clean completion. Skis are going across the hill this way. And even on the flat, let's watch this. As I come across the hill, let me move over here. Come across the hill, skis are going that way. And at transition, I'm gonna deviate the skis right there before pressure. So notice the skis are light and initiation, but then I get a clean completion out of it, okay? Now we're gonna move on to the pitch. Let's roll onto the pitch right here. Okay, so now we're on the pitch. Again, here we go, clean completion. Okay, skis are going across the hill. Now at initiation, there's the deviation right there. So before pressure, the skis deviate, and now there's pressure, and from that, I'm able to maintain clean completions. Here we go again, across the hill, here comes the deviation right there from the skis, and maintaining a clean completion through the turn. Again, deviation, pressure, clean. Okay? So there it is. And I think we can all agree that if a, a kid was skiing like this in a course, it would be a pretty good race run. Okay. So obviously, <clears throat> that position and that, that technique isn't going to work all the way down. And, that, and if you roll onto the flat, you're not going to want to do that deviation. You're going to want to make some more speed. Or if there's an even more moderate section, of course, or it opens up, you're going to want to generate speed. Or if it was an even more difficult section, you would need to lose more speed, okay? So in any of those situations, 
we have in base skiing exotic maneuvers, okay? Different maneuvers that get you into the turn that are different than that base skiing that we just looked at. There's two types of exotic maneuvers. There are the speed reducing exotic maneuvers where you have the stivet, the drift, a butter, a feather, or anything that loses speed on your way into the turn. And then we also have the speed generating or maintaining uh, speed maneuvers. You get the big leg extension that Ted Ligety made famous when he was on 35 meter skis. We really get in that leg out and long and pressuring all the way through the turn. And in the speed maintaining maneuvers uh, currently, we got Marco Odermott doing those jump switches where he lands Sting's fall line on the way in. That's a speed maintaining maneuver. Okay, so we have our base position, whatever position that you're, an athlete is comfortable in, and they can be clean, completing turns on steep to moderately steep terrain. Okay, and then we have everything else, the exotic maneuvers, uh, different things that you're going to do in different sections of the course. Okay. Now, the third piece of base skiing is a simple concept that is the third turn is the first turn. Okay, let's go back to the board over here. Now, when you generally start a course, you're either skating straight towards the first gate or sometimes you're coming in from a side hill. But in either case, here's the starting gate. Here's gate one. You your skate, 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 skate to the gate, okay? And then you get to ride out a clean ski, usually. Okay, here's gate number two. Now, a lot of times at gate two, you're doing little chops. Maybe you have inside ski being clean, but you're chop, 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 and then you get a clean completion. And over here at gate three, you're finally able to get an initiation and a clean completion. So this is gonna be your first real turn of the course. Now, why is it important to identify this? We want to identify the third turn as being the first turn in the course because this is the first place you want to initiate your base skiing or get in your base position so you're clean and ready to attack the rest of the course and however you're going to do it. It creates a, a framework for athletes to prepare tactics for a given race run. Okay, So at gate three, they're identifying, okay, I'm going to be in base position at gate three, and then after that, I'm looking at gate four. Can I move into an exotic maneuver to make speed? Do I need to use an exotic maneuver to reduce speed? Or can I just stay in base and make clean turns for this top section of the course? It also creates a template for coach and athlete video interactions or retrospection in which the coach can say, okay, gate one, there's gate two. Okay, gate three, were you in base here? Did you achieve the simple, the most simple of things, which is at the start of the course, gate one or turn one being gate three, were you in base position? Were you giving yourself a chance to attack the rest of the course at that third gate? Okay. Base skiing in real life. Okay, so now base skiing. So we saw what base skiing looks like on the pitch. Okay, a little ski deviation to maintain clean completions is what I needed to do on that pitch, and that's what we wanted to do. Now, had I rolled onto the flats there, I wanted to move from my base position into a roll-up maneuver or running the line out onto the flat maneuver, which would be an exotic maneuver, and that's how I would approach going onto the flat, and then maybe there's another knuckle going over the next roll on the hill. Now I'm looking, okay, I can't take all the speed I just gained on the flat onto that next pitch, so I'm going to need to stiv it which is an exotic maneuver going over the roll, stiv it into a clean completion, into base skiing for that next pitch. And so in real life, when you're inspecting a course, you are going to be looking at, okay, how do I approach each section, and do I want to run this in my base position, or do I want to be throwing exotic maneuvers at these various sections or, or these you know, difficult sections or transitions or whatever it may be. That is... The idea, that's the philosophy of base skiing. In, in principle, it's fairly simple. Clean completions, you have a base stance, a base position where you incorporate a little drift um, or ski deviation moving into the turn. And when you're inspecting a course or when you're making a game plan, you're counting the third gate as your first turn. Okay. If you would like coaching from me in the future, if you want to reach out to me and get my feedback specifically on your race runs, I am on GiveGo. Now, GiveGo is a fantastic product. It's an app in the App Store. Uh, you can download it. You send me a video of your race run or even your free skiing, and I can voice over it, replay, slow-mo it, talk about what I'm seeing in your skiing, and maybe even mark it up, little angles, all that stuff, and send it back to you, and you can get my feedback on your ski racing. Uh, it's also available on the web at givego.io. Now, I put a lot of effort into this presentation. I think there's a lot of expertise in this presentation. 
if you feel like I've provided some value to you as a ski racer or as a coach or even as a program, then please send some value back my way. I want to remain a stay at home dad and I want to support my family with my expertise as a ski coach. So I've set up a couple of donation links. There'll be a link in the description, paypal.me slash ski dad TV, or you can find me on Venmo at ski dad TV. These are my business accounts. And you know, was this presentation worth a cup of coffee? Was this presentation worth uh, a, 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 a seminar that you would have gone for for skiing or a PSAA class that you would have taken? Those are like $110 a piece. Or a USSA level 100 coaching exam, those are 160 bucks a piece. So what is this information or this idea or this philosophy in ski racing worth to you? You decide what that value is. Please send it my way. I would very much appreciate it. Um, subscribing and liking this video is a free way to support my channel. I would really appreciate that. Um, and I thank you for watching, sticking around to the end. And I hope you get out there and try this out and it works for you. It makes improvements. And if you stick around, and I have two more videos in this. Next, we're going to get a deep dive into the comma-shaped turn. You'll notice when I drew my turns, they weren't C-shapes, they were commas. And then we'll also get into a deep dive into the exotic maneuvers in part three. Thank you for watching. Keep shredding out there.